and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances of earth, just like God controls the heavenly. There is a cry in the heavenlies. Who shall I send? Who shall go for We're not even hearing it. Talk less of answering it. Many are not hearing it. How will you hear it? It's not heard with this ear. It's not heard in the natural. So John 14 says, John chapter 4, verse 1, it says, After this things I look, behold, a door was opened in heaven. That's the prayer I wanted to lead us now. A door was opened not in business, not in politics, not not in your office for you to get promotion. It was opened in the heavenlies. And the first voice which I heard was like the trumpet speaking to me, saying, come up here. That's what I want us to decree and to break through over every one of us. Because I know what it means to speak on deaf ears. If you need talking, people just walk out. And the ones that get it, get it anyway. Many just walk out. A door was opened in the heavenlies. And I had a voice that said, Come up here. That's what you're going to lead us to pray. But beyond that again, and you're going to pray it, cry it for yourself. And you're going to cry it for many sons and daughters of destiny that is within this uh, system, this church, trapped in this other realm that they can't hear, they can't discern what is going on. You're going to call them out. You're going to use the force of the force of revelation, the shattering realms of intercession to pull them out of this realm. Of limitation this realm of the senses but that's where the problem is trapped in the realm of the five senses that's why omnipotence is trapped in 18 vessel and nothing is happening we have come full cycle the Pentecostal move born in 1906 have come 100 years full cycle but he has failed to deliver the, what he promised what he has achieved is to make children out of men now from this moment i'm talking to you forward the season has changed what is a new calling on the church it is the era of sonship that's the era of manhood the era of the manifestations of the sons of God. Where you come is like Jesus is here. I was sharing with our staff about a gentleman I just encountered. He cleared about 36 witches in five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. And the way he does is, is that he doesn't struggle. He'll be laughing, greeting people. How are you? Wow. Then all of a sudden, he just points to them like that. Witches. 38 years in which this how many years lying down paralyzed by stroke Whoa, they're all running that is the era of sonship that's where god is bringing the church now what used to work before we walk you know when a man has grown when he was a baby there are things you tolerate for him when he's an adult he gets punished for some of the things he used to get away with the time has changed our eyes must open. The sonship era is what the Bible calls the kingdom. Those who will restore back the Adamic dominion and all the heritage that belongs to man. It requires taking back our position from what we fell from. We fell from revelation to information. Head knowledge cannot produce sons. As many as are led by the spirit of god they are what 
Head knowledge cannot produce sons. Sensual realm cannot produce it. There is another realm of Christianity. The one that they've preached for us in the last 100 years is the one in which man is at the center of it. It's God trying to when God tries to reach us, is revelation from outside to inside. See the way the Christianity we have practiced so far has been traveling. See the way it has been going. This is the human spirit. This is the soul. This is the physical body where you have the senses. Senses. Soul. Spirit. The Christianity that has been, we have practiced, which is the one that makes children of men, they never grow into manhood. It's one that travels this way. For example, what I'm going to teach you tonight travels from your ear. It gets to your mind. Then it might stay there for some time battling for understanding and whatever the mind can get, it throws away. If finally there is revelation because we prayed and all of that and understanding come, it finally registers to your spirit. So your spirit is getting revelation because you were taught something. The Christianity of the Bible is the one that goes this way. Your mind is learning from your spirit and your body is acting based on inside information. I just changed direction. I said I'm traveling. I'm no more traveling. I can't explain to people why. And head in another direction. Where, who? Not because I read anything on the news or somebody told me something or whatever. I just changed direction. I'm supposed to be entering that vehicle. I just changed and, and changed my mind. I enter a car and go, I have a car. Why? It's inside information. I'm not being governed because the pastor taught. Now what happens is that whenever information comes from outside, because I already have light from within, it checks, assesses what is coming, and takes what is in line with revelation. My spirit is not being poisoned by head knowledge. My spirit is alive in God. I'm functioning. Function is the action of the Holy Ghost on the human spirit. That action produces what is called a quickening. This is what this man is talking about here. A quickening. That quickening is what enables you to hear what is going on in this other realm. A quickening is what happens to your appliances in the house when Nepa comes or Jen comes on and the electricity hits it. Those appliances are their peak TV signal you can pick. Peak radio signal you can pick. Bulbs are their show light you can show. That's how the human spirit is. Now, the Holy Spirit is given to quicken the human spirit. When, when the Holy Spirit acts on the human spirit, it creates a quickening effect. That quickening effect is called unction. When unction, when the spirit is unction, it starts seeing. It comes alive. His eyes open. When the spirit is unction, faith comes alive. When the spirit is unction, it starts knowing things. It's not God told me. You may not hear voice. You just know things. You just know. I'm not supposed to take that road. I'm driving to church. I'm supposed to take this other road. And finally meet our Jota here. Right there on the spot. On the spot. You just know you're supposed to change direction. After your senses can get the details that armed robbers were operating there. The details can come after. But this is your reality. You are living in it as, at the same level, at the same frequency. They are developed. You are using them the way you use your five senses. You are not yet living the sonship life. The Christian life, what Jesus brought to earth until you start living in this realm. Now, when that Holy Ghost action takes place in your spirit, your spirit becomes unctioned, there is a faith. It's not a struggle. That's why you touch blind eyes and open it. It's not a struggle. It's a realm of knowing. It's a realm of all possibilities. 
So you see a generation trapped in the five senses. It's a burial ground of omnipotence. God buried and he can't perform. This is it. You are God. But see how weak. See how blind gods are. A door was opened in heaven and I had a voice that said, come up here and I will show you things. You see, that's what the unction does. It elevates you to another realm. There are, those two realms are there. Your body, your external man came from the earth and is earthly and is designed to respond to this realm. He is equipped with the five senses. The inward man, the real you, did not come here. He came from God. He designed to live in that realm. When Adam fell, Adam fell from revelation to information. Adam fell from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the natural. That's what gave the devil the upper hand. Cancer is a baby when you operate from that realm. Unction. So the moment it comes in, the spirit comes alive and there is light in it. There is a knowing. That light produces active faith, potent faith. The faith of the Son of God. The Bible said, I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live it. He said it's Christ that lives within me. That's how Christ is living in men. He does not live in dead human spirit. One. Then he does not live in recreated human spirit that are not unctioned. He is dormant there. He can't operate. So he said the life, I now live in the flesh because we still live here. I, I'm still here. I have to pay bills. I have to believe for things. I have to buy cars. I have to do business. He said I live it by the faith of the son of god there is a faith of the son of god i'm able to believe like jesus can believe in an issue it's as if i'm possessed when i'm talking about what i want to buy people think it's because i have the money in my account next thing i have bought it the natural man doesn't understand me the one in the church that is not working in the spirit doesn't also understand me He's in the body of Christ, but he's living like the one that is not born again. He doesn't understand. There is a big gulf between us. We are in two different worlds. He fall prey to all of this stuff. Because a trap is before you. You walk blindly into it. But there is an unction from the Holy One that teaches you all things. And one thing about the unction is that he never makes mistakes. He never lies. Oh, you cannot have it and, and, and be, you know, it also say you cannot walk in error, walking in the unction. All our mistakes is, because the realm of the sense is the realm of speculation. Sometimes he gets it, if he has enough information for, because the light of the senses come from the outside. If you are, if you have enough evidence, physical evidence, the senses can make right judgment. When he's, he doesn't have enough, whatever, he just speculates, and that's how we get into trouble. That's how we lose money in business. There is a realm of sonship. The son can do nothing of himself. Jesus is saying, if not for the unction, I am as weak as all of you. But what he sees the father do, that's what he does. So the unction teaches him. He acts it. We call it miracles. We call it supernatural. I was having workers meeting this morning. As I was just about to close. I just knew that one of my staff was very sick and he will just be healed now. I said, who is the person? The guy comes. I didn't know. He's been, I never, never known about the kind of conditions he described. And within seconds, he was healed. Now, what is that? If we don't function in this, we become, we live at the mercy of the devil who controls this elemental world. So, We've been born again, returned back to where we fell from by new birth. That's the meaning of, except a man be born again, he cannot see. The new birth returns us from what Adam fell from. But the oppression is eluding many. The oppressions, the oppressions, the realities. Do you hear from God outside church? The reason I'm prosperous is that I hear from God more outside church than in church. 
I hear from God in church, of course. But I hear him on things like buy that land. I think you need to get that car. I, I, don't invest your money there. I hear him on things like, hmm. Forget about that thing your dad told you. I hear him on. So church becomes a one week affair. Three hours affair. And we live the rest of our life back in the flesh. Governed by the laws of nature. What is this? This is not Christianity, brothers and sisters. This is not Christianity. There is a walk in the spirit. There is a walk in the spirit. I asked a question yesterday in church. Only a handful had anything about the time we are living in. Why? But the Bible said that all your children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be their peace. Is something wrong with this thing that has been bequeathed to us. We need to preach the kingdom of God now. We need to preach it now. This thing we are living is not it. Come up here. A door open in heaven. We're going to demand it open over your life because it might be open on me for me and it's not open for you. It was open for John. It's the realm of the spirit. That's the realm you are born into. That's what new birth is meant to initiate you back into. And you are trapped in this dead stricken realm of the senses. I have to go back to that teaching. The three types of men. In the natural man, the carnal man. The natural man, the carnal man are all trapped there. And then the spiritual man. The carnal man has an opportunity because the seed, he has now been initiated into that realm. Just that he's not functioning. The natural man doesn't have access at all. So this one is blind. Because of him maturity. He needs to grow. Step out of this. This is not all you are. A baby usually when they are born they have eyes but they don't see anything. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. There is a revival that we are supposed to carry in this place. The problem now God is telling me. You see the state of your people. The state of the people. The state of the people. What used to happen since I came to Lagos is that I stepped down to your level. In order for us God told me don't do it again. Stay on the, where I place to. It's time to pull them up. Those who won't come up, leave them there. Take the few that will and go and break down the gates of, of the enemy. That's the truth now. Let me show you something. We are going to pray it. In addition to Revelation chapter 4. It's so when you come up, I will show you things that will come to pass. It's not just the future. The present becomes clear. There are things around you you don't see. You just look at them. The past becomes clear. It's a realm of eternal now. Then, but in Ezekiel, there's something that, that happened to Ezekiel. And I'm going to demand that of God. You are going to demand it now. Some of you need a jolting up into that realm. Because even if they say, come up, you won't hear. You are far. You need a jolting up. In Ezekiel chapter 8, Ezekiel said, I was sitting with the elders when the hand of the Lord came upon me. And that's the first thing. But he now says something happened. God didn't just say, come up here. From the throne room, he had a picture of the revelation of God, the similitude of God. A hand stretched out and grabbed him by the collar and jolted him up. He said, at that moment, I was transported in the spirit and I end up in the visions of God. He traveled to Jerusalem and had divine perspective on issues. Let me let me show you to you. Let me show you to you. Ezekiel chapter 8. And it came to pass in this in the sixth year and in the sixth month. I want to pause. Sixth month of the sixth year. That's six month of the sixth year. That will be June in 2006. I think the last time I had it, we had this kind of thing. Of course, June 6th will be the sixth day of the sixth month of the sixth year of the new millennium. Last time it happened was a thousand years behind. Next time it will happen will be 3006. Only God knows where we will be then. I'm very sure that it's not in this new this world or that all. 
year 1006. And then before then it was AD 6. In June of that year. Some major shifts will occur in the realm of the spirit this June. I've been talking about it. That's why God told me, don't wait till June, start in May. And beyond that, the, the, the first week of June, watch this, that sixth day of the sixth month of June falls into the Pentecost season. The Pentecost season starts the ending of May and moves on to the whole first week of June. There's going to be another major. The three waves will hit this planet this year. One has already occurred. There's going to be another major hit. And you know, when we talk about this wave, many of us don't understand. They think we just talk for talking sake. Living creatures, seraphims, cherubims, Carry divine fire, carry the throne of God and bring it down here. And release new equipment, new order of move, new understanding, new level of, of oppression in the move of God on earth. And after they leave it, they deposit it here. It's just like when God descended on Mount Sinai. A new day began for the nation of Israel. Those who did not understand, you know, all their moment and complaint till then, they were getting away from it. After that time, judgment started. Because this equipment is to prepare us to go and take the nations. It's to go and conquer the, the nations and subdue this and, and bring the fruits of the earth back to the Lord. The last wave of God, the last move of God is what is being initiated now. I don't know if we will have another 100 years. But I've read the prophet saying that it's going to be a quick walk. The quickest ever. And this one is one that has the black race and the rest of the third world at the forefront of it. Is no more a prophecy. It's not something in the future. We are to switch from the prophetic to the apostolic now. The prophetic talks about what God wants to do, deals with all of those wonderful things, prays in line with it to see it come. But apostolic now steps into it and says, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. You know that day, the one that functioned in the prophetic put those writings down. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has known they're talking about something God was going to do. But that one that picked the scripture that day. You know, the apostolic is about seeing what the prophetic has said, what he has said, and finding out the timing, the one that relates to our time, the action, there are steps to take to bring it out. There are steps, there are buttons you press, the what has been revealed starts happening. So the man went for 40 days fast. That what we are calling you this day. A season. This whole period is a period of consecration. It went for 40 days first. Came out of it with the unction that prophets wrote about hundreds years ago. Came out into the temple. Asked them to deliver to him the same book. They gave him this book. He read it. And it sounded in the, in the ears of the people like. I mean you know Isaiah talking again. He said no. This day. Today. Is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing? There is something, there is a shift going on in my life now. Things like cripples, you know, it's not like, oh, let's pray in the, pray for three hours before we can deal with it. It just, it's just, it's just there. Get up and go. That's what is going on in my life now. It's, it's, it has passed the realm of, let's, let's fight to break it. No, we have broken through the sea. We are now there. It's just, get up, go home. And that is it. Is the realm of eternal now. Is the realm of all possibilities. Is the realm of omnipotence. And this thing has been trapped in our spirit for years. Covered up by carnality. Covered up by sin. Covered up by immaturity. And childishness in the things of God. And a new season is done on us now. You will see some of us walk into mortuary and clear, clear corpse. Just like this. Clear them. Not one person. Cold ones. Blocked ones. Lazarus being raised from the dead was after a proper embalmment. And you know the type is the Egyptian embalmment. If you know how that process goes. And what happens to the corpse after a few days. That's why even after he came out, 
with the cocoon all around him. He can't move even bend his head, neck. Jesus give another order, lose him. Break this thing open. Let the guy go. But the resurrection of Christ, he didn't need anybody to lose him. He just escaped from that little hole and he's left. It's like covering me with POP and leaving just a small hole here. The guy escaped from it. Ezekiel chapter 8. Let me show you something. This six year, God is removing man. That's what he's doing now all over the church. He's removing, he's pruning, he's, re he's reconstructing people. And these people he's, he's raising now, these are the man child. It's not children of God. These are sons that are announced shape in the order of the mother, which is Christ. He said that they may be conformed to the first son, that he might be the, the firstborn among many brothers. You look, you can't tell who is who. The purpose of ministry gives it to leave God's people to that level. Come into full manhood, into the fullness of the stature of Christ. We are about to go, go on air, and we are going to have an unleash of a generation of babies. Where are the adults that will look after them? Are trapped in the church in carnality. Blind like the bat, not knowing what is going on. This is the God is breathing afresh on that dead flesh. Because that which is born of the flesh is the flesh. Thank God for the part of us that came from here. That cannot do anything. The one that is giving instruction, have dominion, is that one that came from above. That's what the new birth has given you again. But God is breathing on it. When God breathes on the human spirit, he unctions it. A quickening of cause. When he breathed on that earthen vessel that he molded, the spirit actioned it and turned it into a living being, a living soul. Blood started flowing. But there is a breathing on the human spirit. When he rose from the dead, he breathed on them. Receive the Holy That's what God is doing now. The year that is coming is an unusual year. That is a year of release, 2006, 2007. Those who will flow, fly on the wings of the wind in this coming year, we have to get you back to the molding process, to the breaking. That's, that's what God is doing now. What we need now is to get a this team of workers and corn to lay flat on the altar, lay flat on their faces, and cry for a fresh breath. And repent of dead Christianity and dead religion. Christianity can have one hand with God and one hand with the devil. One hand with God and one hand with the world. Friendship with the world is enmity. When you hold the world, you break your hand away from God. You know, Peter on the door of Pentecost stepped into the apostolic. Joel had done the prophetic about it. Peter said, this is that. Jesus said, this day is the scripture for faith. You, you've been preaching it for years, but today, that's what God sent me to do now. Listen but the point. We've got to open our eyes and start looking at the Bible from a fresh perspective. We have to look at it the way Jesus looked at it. Where are the Messianic scriptures that talked about me? That's how, what we're going to do. Where are all those scriptures that talked about us, Africa, and talking about this season, this church age, this age, the concluding of the church age, that is the dispensation of grace, is the kingdom age. There have been dispensations. This is the perfecting of the dispensation. The seventh age, I'm not talking about religion, church, all those kind of things. That's the falling state of the church. That's church stripped of glory. Man fell and fell short of his glory. That is church in the falling state. And lost his glory, lost his eyes, blind like Samson. Hey, bad. No. We're talking about the glorious church. The one that is put back in charge, put back in the position of sonship, put back to display the glory of and the majesty of the king right here on earth. Now, hear this. There are scriptures that spoke about us now. We need to pick it now and start declaring them into manifestations. Not looking at them as something in the future because there are no more in the future. The seasons for the restitution of all things have come upon the earth. The seasons when God is regathering all of things and reconciling all things to himself has finally come here. This is the last and the final wave. We are just at the beginning stage of it, but this is the right time to get on the boat. Many things to discuss and talk about. You cannot understand, you will not cooperate while you will remain in the flesh. Your mind will be the problem. 
you see you live in that room where we have to talk to you from outside when you start operating from here and the spirit is now dominating the flesh dominating the mind it will be i get a meeting like that i just open my mind you just your spirit will just be agreeing because you are also in that realm god has been ministering to you along the line god has been dealing with you about such time what happens is that the revelation within meets with, with the one that is coming from without there is an explosion within you transformation starts all over there is no struggle you find yourself rushing into what you are hearing not a struggle in the flesh to do what god he said he said i will write my laws in their heart i will write it in their mind they will not need to teach another to know the lord for from the least of them to the greatest of them shall know me that means the manifestation becomes easy because the revelation that causes the oppression is around this is the realm we are to live in now there is world beyond all this small small money you touch you think you have seen anything this world beyond what your mind can grasp available for us in this realm there is mm, the miracles beyond what he said he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings but all of them are trapped in the heavenlies if you lack revelation if you lack access you can't translate if you lack understanding you can't translate if you're not unctioned you can't access all of the things that belong to you are trapped there. This realm of sickness always falling sick. Realm of carnality is not Christianity, my friend. The sixth year, God wants to remove you again. God wants to breathe a fresh breath on you. In the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders, no, just normal, sitting before me, <laughs> that the hand of the Lord fell upon me. That's what we are going to call for upon your life. That's what causes the, the quickening, the unction. And then I looked, and there was a likeness, like the appearance of fire, the appearance of his waist downward, fire from his waist and the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me into the visions of god to jerusalem come up here come up here and he said all of a sudden i was in the spirit and i heard a voice saying behind me man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded that is what is called the proceeding word the now word the present truth the one that you need for the present situation that's when you get it revelation is what gave birth to the church revelation is what the church lives on that's what sustains us he said on this revelation this rock i'll build my church he didn't just bet us revelation too is how we are sustained man shall not live by bread alone but the by the proceeding word not yesterday's word the proceeding word that coming out of the mouth of god a proceeding word could have saved these boys obviously they couldn't hear it and they couldn't assess it they walked into a trap the enemy set for them it's a realm where the enemy can trap you he sets you up this way but we have inside information just take on this one and go that man that was revealing to the king of israel all that the king of assyria would discuss in his bedchamber his name was prophet elisha but prophet elisha was getting his information from this other realm that man that was giving prophet elisha all the secret is living right inside you right now his name is the holy ghost there is a realm of partnership with him, oneness with him. Let us cry out to God. If he has to use his hand, stretch his hand from the throne to check you up from your head, from your collar. If he has to shake up some of your business, shake up something so you can turn attention on spiritual things, let him do it. I don't care what God will do, but right now, from this moment today, a line is drawn within this ministry. You cannot stay on the other side at the borderline again. You can't. There is divine initiative going on now. You cannot stay on the other line again. You can't. You cannot. Let's cry out to God tonight.
to the name of Jesus. There are some things the Holy Spirit wants me to show you before I release you tonight. I'll be a leader Saint you Exodus chapter 28, this is how the priest is consecrated. You are 
born a priest when you give your life to Christ and you are born a king. But there is a way kings are consecrated to function. It's a way priests are consecrated so that they can begin to function. That is where the Lord is bringing us now. If you notice, chapter 28 said, Take Aaron your brother, his sons with him from among the children of Israel that he may minister to me as priest. Aaron and his sons Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Etama. You shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. I don't want to talk about the garments today, but that's one of the aspects of functioning as a priest. There's a proper clothing, there's a proper dress for that ministry. The priesthood is about the ministry. It's different from your business, it's different from what you do in your company. It's a holy calling. It's a holy calling. It's about you stepping out of the nature, stepping out of your career and kind of thing, to begin to function in your calling as God has ordained it in Christ. Your His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto certain work that God planned before time you that you walk in them. There's consecration that enables you to step in. There are three things you need to take note of that I want to take your attention to tonight. Verse 40. For Aaron's sons, you shall make tunics, you shall make sashes for them, and you shall make hearts for them for glory and for beauty. And when he talks about the garments of the priest, he talks about this thing repeatedly for glory and for beauty. If I even want to get into the natural side of the equation, I also want to use this opportunity to also let those of us who are going to be carrying the glory of God in this last day to know that little things like even how you dress matters to God. For the kind of Christian, for that one out there, it may, it, may, it may not matter. But I want you to know that when you get married as a woman, it will matter to your husband how you dress. You come out and show you your nakedness, it's going to affect that man. And you might get some reactions for it. It's the same thing with God. This is marriage. In verse 41, he said, And you shall put them on Aaron, your brother, and on his sons with him, and you shall anoint them. The first thing in the order is listed is anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them, that may be ministered to me as priest. Sanctify them consecrate them and anoint them that is the right order he listed it in the reverse order he listed it in the reverse order for example if you go to chapter 21 you will notice he said in verse 1 this is what you shall do to them to hallow them in order to consecrate them for them to begin to minister say this is what you shall do to them to hallow them so that they can minister to me as priests take one Young bullock, two ram without blemish. This is blood. Blood is applied on them to cleanse them up. Then verse 4 said, Aaron and his sons, you shall bring to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and you shall wash them with water. The word of God, the water is applied to clean them out. It's not just the blood. There are things the blood can't take care of. How shall a young man cleanse his way aright by taking heed thereunto according to thy word? Thy word has I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The Bible said that Jesus is producing a glorious church without spot and wrinkle by the washing of the water by the word. This is the end of this part. Please play the next tape in the series.